The History of the Fire Nation Military The military of the Fire Nation is the United Armed Forces of the Fire Nation. It was the world's most powerful military during the Hundred Year War and saw many glorious victories in battle throughout the span of the conflict. The Fire Lord is the Commander-in-Chief of the Fire Nation military and delegates power through a select few generals and admirals of the Army and Navy, respectively. The War Minister develops and provides technology and equipment for the Fire Nation military and reports directly to the Fire Lord. At least prior to the Hundred Year War's end, female Fire Nation soldiers mainly served in the homeland. The Fire Nation's military is comprised of a large number of personnel, with an extensive propaganda campaign used to convince people to volunteer. The nation's army is second largest in the world in terms of numbers, after the Earth Kingdom, and it maintains the largest navy. The Fire Nation military also possesses advanced and powerful military equipment, giving it huge military capabilities and power projection, solidifying itself as the most powerful military force in the world. The only known force capable enough to match the Fire Nation military head-on was the military of the Earth Kingdom, though it very often experienced major losses against the Fire Nation. Welcome to the Imagi. In today's video, we're going over the history of the Fire Nation military. Before we begin, we publish a new video every day. So be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. But first, if you want to feel like a warrior yourself, there's no better place to do so than in Raid Shadow Legends. Raid has a huge community of over 1 million people playing the game every day, so there is always someone to engage with. But if you would rather play by yourself, the single player is just as varied and challenging, promising hours and hours of fun. There are active Discord and Reddit communities of Raid with thousands of members, always willing to help you figure out how to get started, fight bosses, and be victorious in the end. Raid Shadow Legends just dropped a huge update, making the gameplay more balanced and competitive than ever before. And if that's not enough, the Forge just came out. So now you can save time and start crafting top quality artifacts and competing right away. Become a warrior yourself by using the link in the description and receive the exclusive welcome pack of 100,000 silver, one energy refill, 10 mystery shards, and even your own free champion, Slasher. Don't miss your chance. And with that, back to the video. Army. Fire Nation's army, officially called the Fire Army, is composed of both non-bending and fire-bending soldiers. For much of its history, it included both male as well as female soldiers, though the latter were excluded by the Hundred Year War's end. The army is very large and employs infantry, cavalry, and artillery. The Fire Nation Army traditionally emphasizes hard training, esprit de corps, aggressive strategies, and up-to-date technologies, making it capable of almost any military ground operation. As one of the most advanced ground warfare forces in history, the Fire Army was the first force in the world to use tanks on a large scale. The Fire Army has played a major part in the Fire Nation's history. As a standing force loyal to the Fire Lords, it initially kept the country's noble clans and their private militias in check. In the 3rd century BG, a Fire Army soldier named Ranji became Avatar Kyoshi's girlfriend, firebending trainer, and bodyguard. The Fire Army was eventually used by Fire Lord Sozin and his successors Azulon, as well as Ozai, to conquer much territory during the Hundred Year War. In this conflict, the Fire Army proved to be the strongest army in the world, defeating the militaries of the other nations numerous times. Following the Hundred Year War's end, it was used by Fire Lord Zuko to protect the Fire Nation colony of Yudao amid the crisis surrounding the Harmony Restoration Movement. Domestic Forces While most of its military forces are preoccupied with the conquest of the other nations, the Fire Nation maintains a large and formidable domestic army to defend and enforce the law in both the homeland and in a few of the larger mainland colonies. As opposed to the army, the domestic army employs a surprisingly large number of female warriors and firebenders, who usually do not serve on the front lines. They also serve to train new recruits for both the army and the navy, and as a result, most of the military's forces are trained by high-level female firebenders. They've been charged with guarding villages, schools, factories, dockyards, and prisons, and essentially act as a police force. They keep the population in line and are responsible for apprehending criminals, traitors, pirates, and anyone else who defies the will of the Fire Lord. These soldiers handle the basic training of army and navy recruits from the mainland and surrounding islands. Many of the higher officers are veterans from other branches of the military and thus have significant frontline experience and are highly trained. The domestic army had several encounters with Team Avatar in the weeks following the conquest of the Earth Kingdom, 
They were first seen when a group of officers spotted Aang in his Fire Nation disguise. They thought that he was a student playing hooky due to his wearing a school uniform recently stolen to replace his monk attire. They took him to a local Fire Nation school where he was escorted to a classroom taught by Ms. Kwan. They later assisted the headmaster when he raided Aang's secret dance party after another student told him about it. The guards tried to catch Aang, but the other students put similar headbands on to confuse them and help Aang escape. Katara saved the local village of Zhanghui from the domestic forces whose nearby factory was polluting the river on which the village was situated. She did this by posing as the village's spiritual guardian, the Painted Lady. Later on, the authorities of Fire Fountain City attempted to apprehend Toph after she used her earthbending to scam the city's local conmen and dealers. They managed to capture both Toph and Katara in an attempt to lure in Aang so that an assassin could eliminate him on behalf of Prince Zuko. On the day before the Day of Black Sun, General Shinu of the army reported to Fire Lord Ozai that Earthbender rebellions were preventing total victory in the Earth Kingdom, so he advised sending domestic forces to aid the army overseas. This plan was rejected in favor of a plan to simply burn down the Earth Kingdom using Sozin's Comet. The next day, the domestic army was called forth to defend the Fire Nation capital in the attempted invasion of the Fire Nation led by Aang and his allies. The domestic army was badly beaten as the invaders destroyed dozens of tanks and forced the army to retreat when the eclipse occurred, rendering them powerless. However, as the eclipse passed and the invasion subsequently failed, the domestic army retaliated by deploying their air force and bombing the invasion force. Finally, the domestic army attempted to prevent the traitorous Prince Zuko and his allies from escaping the Boiling Rock, the Fire Nation's most secure prison. This failed miserably when Mei stopped the guards from killing Zuko. When she and her friend Tai Li betrayed Princess Azula, who was at the prison with them, they arrested the two girls and locked them away. They were released after the war's end. Navy As a result of the Fire Nation being an archipelago, its navy is a key part of its armed forces as it is required to project the Fire Nation's power and soldiers to foreign territories. The Fire Nation thus maintains a large standing navy. The navy is composed of hundreds of coal-powered ironclad vessels manned by firebenders as well as regular troops. Using these massive warships, the Fire Navy can launch incredible amphibious assaults like the Great Siege of the Northern Water Tribe. The Fire Nation Navy is the largest and most powerful in the world, capable of dispatching over a hundred warships in larger operations. The Fire Nation Navy is highly organized and stratified, with a clear hierarchy and efficient bureaucracy. All soldiers are expected to defer unquestioningly to their superiors. The Navy's movements are coordinated by Messenger Hawk through various towers placed strategically throughout the ocean, and all towers are required to stay current on all Navy movements. The Fire Navy, in cooperation with the Air Force, was deployed at the Hundred Year War's start to raid the Outer Earth Kingdom and Southern Water Tribe. The Fire Nation owed many of its victories in the century-long war with the Earth Kingdom and Water Tribes to its Navy. It deployed thousands of firebenders to the front lines to fight in the land war against the Earth Kingdom and was capable of bombarding enemy coastlines as well as raiding defenseless settlements. One of the Navy's most notable actions was its prolonged campaign against the Southern Water Tribe. In its opening stages, the Navy bombarded the defenseless coastline, losing only a few ships to the valiant waterbenders. The Southern Raiders, a raiding group within the Navy, were deployed to capture all waterbenders in the tribe and their success resulted in the imprisonment of all southern waterbenders save for Katara. The tribe was left in ruins due to the actions of the navy. Prince Zuko used his personal ship to hunt down the Avatar. However, his ship was among the weakest and smallest in the fleet, and was eventually destroyed in a failed attempt on his life staged by Admiral Zhao. When Aang was in the northern water tribe to learn waterbending, Zhao assembled a massive naval invasion force to destroy the northern water tribe, and this fleet leveled much of the capital city and deployed hundreds of assault troops onto the shores. Aang's timely intervention, however, allowed he and the ocean spirit to merge and annihilate this fleet. The loss of Zhao's fleet proved to be an enormous defeat for the Fire Nation, but did little to slow the Fire Nation's war effort. However, the Fire Nation's interest in the water tribes waned. Despite the loss of Zhao's fleet, the Fire Nation still clearly controlled Earth Kingdom waters, and their ships prowled about within Ba Sing Se's vicinity. During their journey across Serpent's Pass to Ba Sing Se, Team Avatar and their allies were engaged by a single Fire Nation cruiser patrolling the local waters. However, Aang managed to damage this vessel and forced it to retreat. Shortly before Ba Sing Se fell, Chief Hakoda of the Southern Water Tribe and his men were charged with defending Chameleon Bay, a body of water that led directly to the city. 
They use tangle mines to ward off Fire Nation warships, thus preventing any means of attacking the city by water. One such engagement saw four Fire Nation warships fight Hakoda's warriors. The southern warriors were successful in fighting these ships. After Ba Sing Se fell to the Fire Nation, the Fire Nation sent troops with its massive fleets to occupy the city. The Fire Navy remained at sea, picking off the Fire Nation's enemies, and hundreds of vessels remained active on the seas. Air Force By the time of the Hundred Year War's outbreak, the Fire Nation already possessed an air force, which ceased to exist at some point before 99 AG. It was eventually rebuilt with war balloons and airships. It should be noted that the war balloons were designed by the Machinist, an Earth Kingdom citizen, and that the airships were made using the balloons as a base. Being able to control the skies gave the Fire Nation an almost insurmountable advantage over its enemies. Before the end of the Hundred Year War, all known personnel of the Fire Nation Air Force was male. After the conflict's end, women began to serve in the Air Force as well. Under Fire Lord Sozin, the Fire Nation used its Air Force in coordination with the Fire Navy to raid the Outer Earth Kingdom and the Southern Water Tribe. However, the country no longer possessed a true Air Force by 99 AG. After the battle for the Northern Air Temple, the Fire Nation acquired a war balloon, a hot air balloon designed by the machinist, an Earth Kingdom inventor who the Fire Nation had pressed into service by designing weapons and technology. As stated by War Minister Chin, this defeat is the gateway to many victories. Toward the end of the invasion of the Fire Nation, it was revealed that the Fire Nation had constructed many more war balloons which were now fueled by firebenders, as well as several massive metal airships. The Air Force aided Azula in tracking down Team Avatar after Sokka and Zuko freed Hakoda, Suki, and Chitsang from the Boiling Rock. After a short battle at the Western Air Temple, the team managed to escape on Appa. The airship served a critical role in Ozai's plan to destroy the Earth Kingdom by harnessing the power of Sozin's comet. Although the attack raised much of the western coastline, the airships were all captured or destroyed when Avatar Aang and his friends defeated Ozai and sabotaged the attack. This attack essentially destroyed the Fire Nation Air Force as the bulk of its power had been invested in the airships. The Air Force was reconstituted after the war's end and employed to quickly transport members of the royal family such as Iroh and Fire Lord Zuko to important meetings. Special Task Forces Yuyan Archers The Yuyan Archers were a group of elite, highly skilled Fire Nation archers. Since at least 91 AG, they were under Colonel Shiru's command and used to guard the Pohuai stronghold. The Yuyan Archers were used for very stealthy missions where precision and accuracy were vital for success and they were one of the Fire Nation's secret weapons. Prince Ozai hired a Yuyan archer, Bachir, to track down and kill Ikem, the former lover of Princess Ursa, having heard of the group's great skill in archery. However, Bachir failed to find Ikem, and as a result, Ozai dismissed him and told him to turn in his resignation to Colonel Shinu. In the winter of 100 AG, Commander Zhao approached Shinu, seeking to use the Yuyan archers to help him capture the Avatar. After being turned down, a messenger hawk came to Zhao, carrying a letter informing him that he had been promoted and he was now an admiral. This put him above Shinu, allowing him to take control of the archers and employ them in his hunt for Aang. When the archers discovered the Avatar, Aang's extreme agility was matched by their expert aim. Outnumbered and simultaneously trying to collect frozen wood frogs in order to cure Katara and Sokka of fever, Aang could not resist the group and was consequently captured. One archer was later instructed to incapacitate the Blue Spirit. Special Task Forces, Rough Rhinos The Rough Rhinos were an elite group of Fire Nation cavalry, founded by Colonel Monkey. There were five members of the group, each of whom carried a different specialized weapon. They were highly skilled and able to ride their Komodo Rhinos silently through the brush. After the Hundred Year War, the Rough Rhinos left the military to become mercenaries. Special Task Forces, Southern Raiders the Southern Raiders are comprised of an elite force of vessels and soldiers tasked with launching the numerous raids on the Southern Water Tribe. Their insignia is a Sea Raven, and their uniforms are slightly different from the conventional Fire Nation armor. Their helmets have red eye shields that extend to the sides with two spikes on each side, in the resemblance of flames or wings, and the armor is all black except for red outlining around the edges. The commander has a more intricate helmet in that he has no eye shield, but has three red spikes extending outward a curved red spike outlining the eyes, a black nose guard that extends down, spikes near the mouth, and finally spikes on the arm guards. Their flagship is fairly advanced with an unusually large conning tower. The goal of the Southern Raiders is to eliminate all waterbenders from the Southern Water Tribe, as well as stealing supplies for the Fire Nation. 
Strategies. The Fire Nation military forces seem to favor a strategy that symbolizes their bending art. The Siege of the North showed that the Fire Nation uses heavy bombing with their fleets before overpowering the enemy with armored vehicles, heavy cavalry, and heavy infantry. After gaining a foothold, the Fire Nation usually clears the area by advancing at great speeds with cavalry and tanks. After the first advancement, the Fire Nation military usually swarms over the area with infantry. Other strategies are not shown, but they are known to make use of maneuver warfare and for encircling their enemy. Did you enjoy the video? Be sure to tell us in the comments. And make sure to subscribe. And check out these other great videos from the Amagi. If you'd like to support me, you can also subscribe to my personal channel. See you guys tomorrow!